Hello, I'm back and I am finally here to share with you guys some of the techniques that I use to rust metal. Now these aren't techniques I use all the time. These are things that I try to figure out what work best for me. Two of these techniques are probably using products that you have sitting around the house and the other two are products that you can easily get online. I will also link as many of the videos that inspired me because this isn't a tutorial because watching metal rust would be really, really boring and it's not a process video because I just don't know how to do that. So what I'm going to do is show you the products I use and the result that I got. So to start off with, I this is I tried to stay consistent in what I dropped um, in all the liquids and I used some Butterbee scraps pieces. This is just a little binder clip that I got at Staples, a couple safety pins, and a little clip that I got at Hobby Lobby. Now this one right here, I would recommend that if you're going to use that, that you would you know, take a piece of sandpaper and sand it off because it does have a coating. I didn't do that in my techniques, and you can tell, um, but to get that real rusting effect, I would recommend that you do that. So my first technique right here is vinegar. So it's white distilled vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, and table salt. And in the videos that I watched, the people gave measurements. I didn't measure it. What I did was I just put enough. I mixed vinegar, the hydrogen peroxide, just enough to cover the for the liquid to cover what I had in here, and then poured a whole bunch of table salt. Um, in one of the videos that I watched, the girl said to mix the vinegar and salt first, and let it you know mix together, and then add the hydrogen peroxide. I didn't do that. I not I'm not sure if I would have got a different effect, but this is the effect I got. Oh, and my little safety pin. And I really wanted to do a paper clip, but I couldn't find any when I was doing this. So this is the final result after sitting in vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, and salt for 20 minutes. Now the longer you leave it in, the more of an effect you're going to get. I mean, this is okay. It's not what I would prefer if I was going for the resting technique. Everything kind of has a, a coppery color, which I'm okay with, but it's not the result I was looking for. And as far as these pens, I don't know if I can get close enough. Let me see. I mean, they look okay. And they're all right, but this is, like I said, after sitting in there for 20 minutes. The longer you leave it in there, I'm sure the better of an effect you'll get. Next technique is bleach and vinegar, and I highly recommend that if you do this one, that you definitely do it outside as it's very, very strong. And, okay, so I didn't stay true to what I said about using all the same type of pieces, but basically I tried to. And let me see, hold on, sorry. Let me just get all these in my hand. See, I'm not good at this stuff. This is why I don't, this is why I don't do it. Oh, and a couple paper clips, or safety pins. So, here we go. Now, my son asked me to put this piece in, and I love the look of that. It got that patina look. I think that's really cool. I, I actually got this from Butterbee Scraps, too. And there's my little safety pins. And these turned out all right. I mean, here's my, the, I wasn't, this wasn't my favorite. And this one definitely right here isn't my favorite. I can see a lot of gold. But this was only in the liquid for 20 minutes. This one, that turned out awesome. Oops. And like I said, the longer you leave it in, the more of a rusty effect that you'll get. So those turned out all right. I mean, I was okay with that. Now this next technique... This one right here, I was so excited about. I ran out and bought the product. I was so excited about it. I didn't listen when I was watching the video, not like I should have. This is the product I used. It's called PCB Etchant Solution, and you can get this at Radio Shack. I think it was twelve, almost thirteen dollars. And I watched a video. This video, I'm going to link. If you have aluminum, that's what that product works best on. It's an acid, I believe, so you have to be careful. And if you're younger, definitely have adult supervision. Uh, it works great on aluminum. I mean, awesome, and it's fast. This guy dropped in little pieces of aluminum. Within less than a minute, it's already started bubbling, and then it starts smoking, and then you take it out. And the way you deactivate the acid is you drop it in water, and then the chemical reaction stops instantly. 
Um, so I dropped my pieces in and it's like one minute, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I put the video in again and watched and that's when I figured out he was using aluminum. So I immediately went inside, got an aluminum ball, like, you know, some aluminum foil, rolled it up into a ball, dropped it in. And then it was like almost instantly, it just started heating up and bubbling and doing everything that it was supposed to do. So I don't know how many of the products that we use as crafters that are made out of aluminum, but if you ever have anything aluminum that you want to rust, uh, I mean, it, it turns out great and it's super fast and that was awesome. But you do have to use water to deactivate it the acid okay and then the next is my favorite technique um, it's pro and it's probably the most expensive I would say that all the products that you use to do to get this is probably going to be about thirty dollars and I'll, I'll link them um, but here is my result and this is the kind of effect that I really like and it's using this product and it's called metal effects iron paint and let me show it to you it's a uh, I don't know, some kind of a, can you see it? I don't even know what to say it smells like. It smells like a auto parts store, but it smells like SOS pads with chemicals in it. So you paint this on your piece, and then you let it sit there for 45 minutes. Definitely wear gloves. And then after 45 minutes, you use this rust activator. You spray it on, and then you just wait and let it dry. I pour it in one of these little Tim Holtz. Is this a Tim Holtz mini mister? I'm not sure. Ranger. I poured it in here and then sprayed it on my piece and then let it rest. And so let me show you again. This is the, the rust effect you get. And I really like that. And they also have, I, though I only have those two products, but they have one that you're supposed to start off with at the start. I guess it prepares the metal. And then there's one for when you're done that seals in that look, maybe so that the stuff won't flake off. So, I mean, because this stuff, oops, it does kind of flake the rust. I, I don't know what it is, but I was really happy with this. I What I'm really happy with is I like this look for me. And... So that was everything. And I, I think, you know, so what I would say is if you're going to do it at home, for the best effect of, you know, like a little, you know, a rusty effect, I'll look at the back of that. I would definitely suggest the bleach and vinegar and doing that outside because it is strong. You know, I, I don't know. I almost like this the best. I'm not sure. I mean, for home, definitely this is good. Bleach and vinegar, we all have that. It's not too costly. The other, like I said, is about $30. And I love that patina look. I wish I knew what kind of metal does that. You know, like why? What's different about that? So that is everything. And I'm sorry, you know, like I said, I'm sorry it took me so long. I just, I had to figure out what I did and how I did it. And I had to do everything over again and try techniques and... Um, so it just kind of took me a while, but anyway, so that is it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm a hundred percent sure you guys, any of you can do a better tutorial or explain all this better. And if you do, please let me know. I'd love to watch your video and, um, thank you for all my new subscribers. And whenever someone subscribes to me, I always go right to your channel. And if you have videos, I watch, <laughs> I actually watch them and I get inspired again. So thank you and thank you everyone for all your nice comments and for all the people who are asking where I've been. I, it makes me feel good. You know, it makes you feel good to know you're missed. So um, I think that's it. I rambled on long enough. You guys have a great day and God bless you. Bye.